Today we are at Colchester Institute and we have a group of students to my left who are on the Career Academy in Business course and they are going to pose a set of questions to Gordon Kearney to my left who is um, from Fiducia Wealth Limited and um, they are going to pose questions to him to get um, answers and to expand their knowledge on financial advice and this will um, enable them to record this as a video that will go towards the Money for Life challenge. Now these students who are on the Career Academy in Finance course will introduce themselves. Hello, I'm Paulina. Hi, I'm Dan Green. Hi, I'm Emily Bowman. Hi, I'm Danny Neville. Hi, I'm Lewis Rising. And I've got the first question, which is, what should we look for when we're taking out a credit card or a loan? Thanks for that question. Um, I think the most important thing is, uh, is to look at the affordability. Um, if you're getting out a loan or indeed a credit card, you need to really ask yourself, can you afford to make the repayments? Because um, that is crucial. If you can and you're comfortable with the repayments, uh, the first thing to really look at is the, the APR. Um, and then beyond that, um, to look at things like um, the company that's giving you the credit. Um, <coughs> there are a lot of companies out there that are less notable than others. So you've really got to do your research to make sure you've got a reputable institution. I have the second question. What does APR mean? Um, when should I pay them off monthly or over a period of time? Okay, the, the APR is the annual percentage rate. So it's, it's the rate of interest which you're going to be charged, annualised on a 12-month basis. Um, second question there is when should you look to pay off um, debt and, and the repayments? And the, the answer to that is uh, in the first instance. If you have a credit card, it's, it's vital that you pay on a monthly basis as and when it's due. Um, that is great significance, probably um, less than most people uh, understand, because every single transaction that you take out affects your credit history, or affects what's known as credit rating. Um, does anybody know anything about credit ratings and, and how they work? Um, a bit, yeah. Could you, what do you think it is? To Credit rating, from my understanding, is your income to outgoing expenses on a monthly basis, and whatever your job role and responsibility is, they have a, a rating on that risk of entitlement. It's it's there and thereabouts. I mean, you're absolutely right. It, it's down to risk. Um, <coughs> whenever you take out a, a financial contract, whether that's a credit card, a mobile phone bill, a mortgage, or a loan, car loan, um, every single um, bit of debt, if you like, or, or credit. Um, is noted with what we call the credit rating agencies. So in this country, there's a number of companies called Equifax, um, Equilibrium, and what they do is um, they monitor every single repayment. It's kind of like a, a school register, if you like, because if you're in and you, you make the payment, it's a, a positive, and if you miss, it's a negative. And if you build up lots of negatives, i.e. you miss your payments, um, then effectively what that does is it, it tells the, the bank or the lending institution going forward um, that you're a risk. And if you're a risk, then the way that banks work is that they want a greater rate of interest for the risk that they're going to take. Um, so it's vitally important that when taking out any, any form of debt that um, you can afford it. Moreover, that you keep up the payments. Um, the, the other side of the thing to remember with credit cards is if you miss a payment, they could very well make a charge. So you compound the problem that your debt is getting greater as opposed to getting smaller. Is it better for an asset account or savings account? Um, that's a good question. Um, a lot depends on, on the nature of, of what you're saving for. But I would say, in the main, um, it would be better to have an ISA. In your instances, you would qualify um, for a cash ISA or even a junior ISA. Um, the benefits of ISAs are, are that um, they are tax-free. Uh, invariably, the rate of interest that you get in, in, on offer from the banks and the building societies are going to be greater than that of the savings account. Um, and they're flexible. So when you reach, re reach age 18, you can convert them into uh, stock and shares ISA, which gives you broader equity exposure should you wish to do that. With the knowledge you have now, how will you finance going to university? Is it best to have a student loan or have a personal loan? Um, <coughs> the first part of that question, um, I would say my advice, and th this is not just with regards to university, it pertains to um, saving for a mortgage, uh, car loans, or anything like that, and, and that is to start early. 
Um, the sooner you start, the greater the, the chance that you're going to meet your target. Um, Einstein once said that the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. Um, and it really is truly amazing how saving early and on a regular basis compounds up at such a quick rate and it'll get you to, to your goal. Um, with regards to, to university, it's, it's not cheap. Um, I think the first protocol has got to be speak to your parents. Um, can they help? Can grandparents help? Because um, that could be uh, the, you know, the best option for you. Um, with regards to the second part of the question, you know, bank loan over student loan, I think uh, it's a bit of a red herring because you've got to remember when you, when you approach a bank to borrow money, they're going to ask for either um, a deposit or indeed some sort of collateral, something that you can prove that it's, that's there for the bank to take should you not be able to, to meet your payments. Um, most students are not going to be in that position um, to, to offer that. And secondly, the banks are going to want repayment of their loan pretty quick. I mean, they're unlikely to defer any, any repayments. It's highly likely to be straight away. And you can imagine if you have no income, how can you make the repayment? Um, so as I said, it's a bit of a red herring. Student loans in themselves, historically, offered fantastic value. Um, so very low interest rates, very flexible structures. That has changed. Um, I believe the current rate of interest on a student loan is going to be 3% above inflation. But even at that rate, it's still good value for money. Um, the other merits of the student loan are that you don't have to pay it back until you earn over £21,000. Uh, what's more, when you do earn over that, it's only 9% over that rate. Um, and importantly, the employer does the work for you. So when you start employment, you start paying back that loan, and it's all deducted at source. It's a sort of graduate tax, um, if, if you will. Um, and the final point to, to note about student loans, as opposed to any other form of loans, they're not on your credit card. So the credit rating agencies I mentioned earlier, they don't take a record of this particular um, debt store. Uh, so all in all, I, I would favour, if the option is between a bank loan or a student loan, a student loan. And when should I start paying for a pension? Uh, that's a very good question for somebody so young. Um, believe it or not, you could actually start contributing to a pension today. Uh, since 2001, your parents could have created a pension fund for you and contributed. Um, but I would suggest that you have more pressing priorities in terms of thinking about university, um, maybe even a, a business venture, um, or indeed a mortgage. Um, pensions are... The, the, go back to my earlier point about the earlier you start the better. Um, so I would always encourage early um, payment of, of any um, plan, uh, but by the time you, you guys are going to, to reach the workforce, there's going to be something in place called uh, NEST, it's a sort of a, con a national um, compulsory scheme that you as a, an employee will have to contribute to, and your employer, and the government. So it's uh, kind of a moot point, when should you, it will happen as soon as you hit the workforce. So our work pension is always the best, and what should I look for? Okay. Historically, um, work pensions, or particularly what's known as final salary pensions, have always been the, uh, the, the gold standard and the best, but they are um, a dying breed of that type of pension. Um, the question you've got to ask yourself, or moreover, your financial advisor should, should ask, is what are the contribution rates to the, the respective pensions, i.e. a private arrangement or an employer arrangement, what are the fund options and what are the charging options? And then, obviously, with that information, the financial advisor should be able to put you in the right direction. Um, finally, how would I plan for purchasing a property? Uh, I'll go back to my former <laughs> question, uh, question in terms of speak to your parents. Um, the average age of a, a first-time buyer now is, is, is over 30 years of age. The deposits vary from region to region, but it, it's it's north of sort of twenty-five thousand um, pounds. Clearly, it's a it's a challenge to amount. Um, so, if if you do have parental support, always start start there. Beyond that, if if that's not there, then it's like all uh, financial plans. You've got to set yourself a goal, a target amount, um, and a time frame, and you need to put a plan in place to to reach that goal. Um, the quicker you'll you'll reach it quicker if you're more dedicated. So. Now, if you want a nice pair of trainers for your, for your birthday, you'll get a nice pair of trainers, but if you want that diverted into your, your deposit fund for, for, for mortgage, um, then that's going to help. I'd like to thank um, Gordon for 
um, coming today and giving the students um, great financial advice and informing them the importance of building for their futures and what to do and what not to do. And also I'd like to thank the students from the Career Academy to my left that have asked these questions that will be able to be used for other students so they can learn from this experience as well.